here are the GPU Z statistics from my recent RX 5700 hundred and twenty dollar purchase from AliExpress. Um, it does fine, but one of the fans is broken, so I'd expect it not to hold up fine for long. I bought it after one run of preset 720 benchmark Fermark. The temperatures were still climbing from the first run to the second, which is what is recorded here. About 67 on screen. Well, you'll see it in the graph. They'd have gone up. Well, they usually do. I might just have had hot cards before. Here is the Elsa RX 5700 I received today from AliExpress. One of the fans doesn't work properly. You can't really tell without powering it up. Giving them a spin, you can hear one is no noisier than the other. If this had any QA, the tester must have just shrugged it off with a not my problem. Start by taking the screws out of the individual fan. With luck, it will be hot swappable. It falls right out. But I can't get the wire out without cutting it. As will eventually show, that may be the best option where replacements can't be found. The brand is Focosi. Part number is FY010010M12 LPA. I find 4K screws to remove. It's still not coming apart, and I can see no other way but taking the four heat sink tension screws out. They're pretty robust and standardized, but it means breaking the thermal sealant. Just one wire securing the fans still connects them. Mm, that's a lot of thermal paste. It looks like the thermal compound has bridged between the main chip and the surrounding SMD devices. And I guess it's not as conductive as people make out because it runs fine apart from the fan. This heat sink's been recycled before. At least it's good quality copper. The silver paint has come away when the last lot of thermal paste was removed. There are four longish screws securing the shroud. This will give me full access to the fans and wiring. And the wiring the heat sink. The other said it was just 23 centimeters. I measure 27, excluding the L bracket at the front. The extra metal is why some computers don't even have fans. So I'm grateful to AliExpress for providing more metal than advertised. But a little annoyed that I'm having to rebuild it just because one fan wouldn't work. More annoyed that I've got to wait to use it. I have to put up with the fan flopping around whilst I remove all of the wiring. With another screw loosened, the wiring is free at last. Now I can measure for a replacement. 39mm separates the screw holes in equilateral triangle. And the triangle shape allows uh, some slack in the cable because we can rotate. We don't want cables sticking in the fans though. It's a long cable we have here. 95mm is the fan diameter. It's important to get 95mm full fan size and Full current capacity of 450 milliamps for optimal cooling. And at a pinch, we could use any fan lying around because they're all going to be smaller than 95 mil. Any GPU fan, even CPU fans are about that size. If and they're circular. Searching for the part number of the fan, it's FY01 blah blah LPA. Return fans that were the right size. They're FF, XFX branded. They might have had the right wiring too, but the screw mounts were wrong. They weren't an equilateral triangle, there were four of them. Screwing the fan in neatly is of utmost importance to you. If we're not going to make a neat job, we might as well just take the shroud off and gaff the tape. No. Zip tie some 12 mil, 12 centimeter fans on. And the cable is about 21 centimeters to the first branch connector. Another 21 after that's the final. I'm not going to see these measurements in an advert. 
I've got to get the right part number. Failing that, I have to cut the cable myself. The, the wiring isn't going to be bad on these. I can hear a, a rattling coming from a fan. It's the motor causing that. I can spin it by hand and hear it. And the wire isn't going to break because it doesn't really bend, doesn't do anything except deliver current. Because, because I can't find a correct size fan replacement for this, an exact size. I'm going to have to cut somewhere. The chip has no markings, but the perimeter bears the number 21509172020. I searched this on Express and I found that it's a um, stencil for 5700XT rebooling. Well, that's what they're calling it. It could be the part number for the 5700 or 5700XT they both use. Navi 10 chips. So that's promising. It's a good indication that we've got a genuine one here. If it was rebooled, then it's probably as good as any other second-hand chip. It's the memory on these that tends to go. I mean, we've got good pads touching the memory from the heatsink, and it even extends to those R16 thingy-bobs. I've heard that it's the voltage regulators that need cooling. These RAM chips look fine though. The pads are good. I'm not going to disturb them. Testing and use will be the judge of whether the memory is good. I try to align the mating faces and remember just in time that the shroud needs attaching first. I lock in using the heat sink tensioner screws. Perhaps I should use the other screws first. They don't seem to bite very far now. I can't remember if screwing to metal or plastic. In the bottom one it just turns once and it's done. I'll leave the fan screws in situ for future use. Here's a random graphics card I have lying about. I'll see if I can reuse any old fan from it. Without removing the heatsink, I can remove the shroud with just four screws. Distance between screw holes is a fit. I can't get the other fan out. Its screws are stripped. Without the pair's wiring, I've nowhere to plug the donor fan. But it is a total, if suboptimal fit. Here I've dismantled the 5700 again. I wanted to plug the fan into its connector, so I had to break the thermal sealant. And you can see that there was enough, it's covered it. I didn't show you my first attempt at replacing the fan with a 12 cm 12 case fan. This is actually the second one here, the first one. Well, I didn't have the luxury of having taking it apart to try and connect it. But the problem with this one is it doesn't go back together. The cable ties interfere with attaching the heatsink. Here it's all plugged back together again. That three wires into a four pin connector is connected. It's a little hole in the heatsink it should have passed through. I missed that again when I was reassembling it. You really do have to get the wires the correct length, otherwise they're gonna get folded in half, caught somewhere. Snagged, melted, no, probably not melted, but interfere with heat flow at least. 